Yo, what's cracking? I thought I'd take you guys out and show you the Mark II real quick. As you know, two years in the build, so here she is, finally driving on the road and running. Slammed as fuck on 18, so let's do a quick walk around. Alright, we'll start from the back of the car because as you know the back of the car is where all the action was before. So it was a Series 1 converted to a Series 2. So we got the Series 2 boot lid, Series 2 tail lights. We purchased the uh, rear beaver panel which I think I've already run through the, um, the repair process so I won't go too much into it. Um, this is the exhaust system. I think it's a 3 inch with a muffler. Um, and it's straight through starting from the TC15 stock turbocharger I'll show you guys the engine bay real quick Ugh. So it's still running fairly stock power with just bolt-ons stock ECU um, So here's what it looks like under the hood The mighty one JZ so as you know this car came as a shell so this is from another chaser um, stock 1J uh, metal intake pipe, epoxy pod filter, blitz front mount intercooler, brand spanker, um, a gritty radiator to keep it nice and cool. Now Charlie, CL Motor Repairs, dropped all the driveline in, so he's done a bit of a refresh on the engine as well. So um, we've got a 2JZ water pump with a 2JZ clutch fan hub, so it's pretty windy and it keeps the engine nice and cool. Brand spanking new alternator. Um, I had to get an aircon compressor as well, a new one, new belts, timing belt, um, cam seals, like, you know, all your general servicing bits and bobs have been done, just so, like, while the, car, while the engine's out of the car, it's just easier to do all those things. And things like alternator, I was like, bro, if a starter motor, I was like, all those little things that could potentially go wrong, may as well fix it uh, you know put brand new parts in while it's easily accessible so that's performance wise oh yep so ct15 turbo it's also got the ct uh termi dump pipe i don't want to touch it fucking burn myself probably so that's termi dump pipe going all the way down and that meets up with a straight three inch stainless exhaust system done by hacks north meat performance exhaust um and that exhaust goes all the way through to a muffler and then out through the single tip, um, stainless tip. Funny story, the guy who actually welded the exhaust for this um, was the bloke that I bought my white S13 from. So Tim, shout out to Tim if you're watching this bro. Thank you for doing a mad, mad, mad exhaust um, welding job on this because bro, like this is one of the, like of all my, all the lowest cars that, that, all the lowered cars that I've ever had, it's never been tucked up so nicely that I can just drive over speed bumps and damn this lighting look good uh drive over speed bumps and not have to worry about fucking scraping so it's immaculate i think i like this lighting shot better <laughs> yeah anyway um let's talk about fitment let's talk about suspension so after i got the car after we got the car running there was still a few nigglies that we had to sort out you guys would have seen the previous videos of the engine misfiring so it ended up being spark plugs i went on a wild goose chase trying to figure that one out um and fitment wise we're running work rezax 18 by 9 at the front 18 by 10 minus three offset in the front and zero offset in the back we've had to pump the guards out a fair bit like there is like you can't even get a finger in there like you can probably put a stick in there yeah that's it you, you could run this little stick through there but she's running pretty tight fitment um yes it is a little bit cracked and a slight a bit mangled on the other side but let me tell you like i tried everything to get these guards to fit man uh like i used a guard roller i modified the guard roller then i used a phone book then the last resort was to actually use a piece of timber and just kind of get some leverage and push it out. Traditionally in Japan, um, the way they do it is that they actually uh, hammer it from the inside or they cut the actual metal and then hammer it out 
and then smoothen it out and then the finish is immaculate if you do it that way but unfortunately I got the wheels the day after or the day of that I was sending the car off for paint so ideally I could have like made the fitment work first so pro tip for you guys if you guys are doing a build before you send your car off for paint make your wheels fit bang them out and get your body panel guy panel beater guy painter to smoothen it out and make it look fresh so I mean fresh after a respray I didn't really want to have to hammer my guards and crack the paint so I think I've done pretty well in that respect I've annoyed a lot of people on TikTok because they said oh you've ruined your car your body lines I mean yeah it's not 100% perfect but for a DIY effort and you gotta understand like the only other guard person that pumps out guards is all the way in Canberra uh, shout out Andy the guard roller but that's like a six hour round trip for me plus a couple hundred dollars in fuel and also not to mention the actual service cost itself. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, the fronts are running 25 mil lower control arms by Kazama. Um, so basically it's extended the lower control arm by about 2.5 centimeters, 25 mil. It's also running, I was going to run shortened spindles, which kind of help the upper control arm not slap the top, but decided not to run them but I still do have them just in case if you want to buy them hit me up <laughs> um, it's also running Black Arts factory knuckles Kazama tie rod ends and extended inner arms new boots and also a hard race RCA which is a roll center adjuster and what that does is because you've lot because the car's been lowered heaps you put the roll center adjuster in there to kind of raise the center of gravity up a little bit so it ends up handling a little bit better so I've sat one of those in as well uh, what else is in the front and that pretty much covers the, the front the front suspension setup um, moving on to the rear we've got all what's the word for it the name escapes me oh it's also I'm also running um aftermarket caster arms in the front as well so talking about the next thing which was the rear arms fuck what was the rear arms I completely forgot let's just have a look Rear arms, ah, oh, um, D-Max, yes, as you can see we're running D-Max arms in the rear, uh, camber, toe, traction, um, 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 what else, oh yeah, diff-wise, let's talk about, um, like drivetrain, uh, diff-wise we're running a Cusco 1.5 way LSD, with solid diff inserts that actually came with the car so I didn't have to actually put those in I am experiencing like the shuddering at low speeds when you're turning tight so that's apparently one of the characteristics of the diff itself uh, I've never actually earned a 1.5 way before so I've only earned a 2 way actually no I have earned a 1.5 way in the 180 hmm but yeah this one has a bit of a just wants to kick out bro just wants to fucking skid really and to answer your question, am I going to skip this thing eventually? Fucking earth, of course I am. But unfortunately, New South Wales tracks are pretty much all closed for now. So this thing's just going to be a street car for now. So street crimes, probably not. Um, don't want to don't wanna risk it, bro. Fuck that, bro. It fucking seeps. Um, 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 what else are I talking about? So, oh yeah, let's talk about the gearbox. So it's got a, a brand new R154 gearbox from Toyota. Uh, NPC button brass button clutch and uh, to put the power down I mean I think stock wise is probably pushing about 200 kilowatts at the wheels um, I've just put a boost controller in as well the GFB boost controller which is that little solenoid there and I'm just pretty proud of wiring in that in myself along with the Viper alarm um, security dash cam the works you know um, 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 what else we got? That's pretty much it, I think, mechanically. Everything else is stock, like stock brakes, this, that. Um, if you guys have a front sump dipstick and tube, let me know. Because right now I'm using a rear sump dipstick and tube. Um, and it works, but it's not... I'd rather get the actual, the real deal, you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, that pretty much covers mechanically. Oh, I've also got the aircon regas as well, like you would have seen in my previous video. Ugh. Upgraded the grill. So this is the GX grill from the NA2J or 1J NA1J models, which are in the, um, Japan. People swap them out because it's got like the the thicker chrome. It just has like adds like an extra VIP feel to the car. 
Um, the badges come in white or black, so I can actually swap out the black or white to uh, badge from my other one. I actually think this might actually be a Tour of V Series 2. I don't know, but it's a GX or Tour of V. Uh, let me know in the comments. Um, exterior styling wise, bro, don't you just love these fucking these things? Like this is this is just the one of my favorite features of the car. Um, exterior styling, it's a Series 1, so it's still rocking the Series 1 front bar, Series 1 front lip, still rocking the amber indicators, but I'll probably replace those out to clear down the track. Um, uh, series 1 OEM side skirts and Series 1 rear lip as well. I mean, the re I feel like the rear lip and the side skirts kind of look the same anyway. It's more so the front bar that differs a lot from Series 1 to Series 2. Um, I mean, exterior styling wise, I'm extremely, extremely happy with it. Like, I was going for like that OEM, OEM type look. And I can safely say that I've quite achieved it. It's getting a bit windy, so I reckon I'll show you guys the interior and we'll fucking call it there. Um, inside, real Camry spec as you can see. Um, I've given it a pretty basic clean. I reckon it could do another clean up. Unfortunately, all the time it's spent in the sun, you can see the carbon starting to, the clear coat starting to fade off. Um, so Thomas has actually given me a tip. He said you can actually sand this back, except you'll probably get arthritis from doing it because it's so fucking intense. So you can sand, sand, sand this back and it'll go to like looking like the nice black carbon, uh, which none of mine actually look. Mine are all yellowed out. Um, yeah, interior, stock standard steering wheel. I put the Apple CarPlay head unit in as well, the XAV1000. Even the stock shifter, like I haven't changed any of that. Um, fire extinguisher, ink extinguisher in case things get a bit litty. It's got uh, upgraded speakers as well. Sony, I believe, that were already in there. I just rewired them and tidied it up. Um, 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 that's really it, guys. Like it's it's crazy to think that. Like two years ago, it's all in the build. It's just like after it's all done, it's just it just it's now just turned into a car. You get me? Like before, it was a build, it was a project, it was a mission. You know, I'm out breaking my back, wiring shit, and now it's just, now it's just a car, like legit. And I'm sure you guys want to hear what it sounds like, so let's, let's uh, give it a cheeky start up. Oh, also a quick hack you can do, instead of buying like the OEM key, which costs like 400 and something dollars, you can just get like, your, instead of rocking the ugly metal key, you can get the uncut um, Toyota, this black key for like 20 bucks 30 bucks on ebay and then you just take it to your the nearest locksmith and you can get this cut for like 20 bucks so 50 bucks you can get like a you know proper toyota key i'm sure you guys already know that um but yeah that's only if you have an aftermarket um keyless entry system so anyway let's give it a start up oh and it's running a 460 warbro fuel pump Feels. the other sound of course everyone wants to hear the dose right so let's talk dose you guys know that I love my dose I mean half of you guys probably know me because my freaking roses are red violets are blue my one Jay-Z goes you hear how loud that freaking fan is bro So, when I first heard that, it's like, your ha it's so scary, you don't want to actually put your hand there because it's fucking blowing so much freaking wind. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty um, intimidating when you got your hand there and it's blowing so much air, but you actually can't even hear the dose um, from the engine bay here. Like, I have to actually be driving to hear the dose, but you hear how loud that is. It's quite scary, but <laughs> on, the, on the, um, the positive side, the good thing is that the car will stay nice and cool because obviously the 2J water pump and fan, clutch fan was created for the 3 litre um, Jay-Z engine, which is the 2JZ. And this is the one point, uh, 2.5 litre, so obviously, yeah. I mean, she looks good, man. Look at it, bro, like with the lights on. 
So the orange lights are actually the, the factory fog lights. There's a switch inside you can turn her on and off it. But there she is, like she's looking fucking good, eh? It's a bit bumpy at times. Um, that's just any car on Coilovs is always going to be a bit bumpy. But the overall drive is, is, is fairly smooth, if you get me. Um, navigating over speed bumps, like I said, very easy with the exhaust tucked up nice and high. We've also got minimal tire scrub. Thanks to the pumped guards. And it's just an overall comfortable drive, you get me? I mean, of course, if you go in any car that's got really low suspension and you're traveling on a bumpy road, you're gonna feel it a lot more. And shout out to you if you live in Sydney, you know that Sydney roads are pretty bad. Like, Sydney roads are pretty, pretty bad. There's it's quite, there's some quite un unforgiving roads out here in Sid, so you just have to know how to navigate them and um, drive slowly and just not give a fuck about the traffic behind you too much, eh? But what I love about the um, the Mark II or the JZX chassis is that they're so comfortable. Like, look at all this space, bro. Like, and you just really let your nuts hang. The seats are super comfortable. Obviously, they're not ideal for drifting because you want something to kind of or racing, you want something to kind of hug you a bit more. First gear. Uh, I've tuned the boost control to about 14 psi. Turn the aircon off real quick. I don't know about this car behind me, it looks like an undercover. I'll just give you guys a dose, like, I'm not gonna fucking send it. So the thing is nowadays, boys and girls, you gotta watch out for not actual cop cars. You gotta watch out for undercover police cars. And I don't know, the, the kind of pattern that I've seen emerging is like Hyundai i30s, Hyundai i40s, and they're like a like a matte, like a metallic gray, bluish gray. And this car behind me was like a Mazda CX something, and I don't know, has a bit of gear on the fucking dash, so. Just gotta play it safe, bro. So I, I ain't doing anything silly here. I'm just kind of dosing a little bit here and there. So, but look, if you do, if they catch you like him, then they will call up Highway Patrol and then you get reamed. For those of you guys that are not from Australia, Highway Patrol. Uh, uh, oh fuck! Speak of the devil, bro. I just see one now. I'm just passing one now. Holy smokes! Bro, what the actual? I just fucking summoned. I just summoned that cunt. Holy fuck. Bro, what the? Million dollars in my bank account. <laughs> That's gonna happen. Though. What the fuck? I was just talking Highway Patrol and then one guy just fucking. Sp it's like it fucking just spawned on the other side of the road. Holy shit. So 
what I'm saying, bro. You gotta fucking... Shit. So yeah, that's it, my dudes. As she sits right now, I guess now it's time to enjoy the two-year build. Keep it sensible and stock-ish for now. And then, who knows, a couple of months down the track, I have a turbo setup ready to go on. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, comment, subscribe, all that bullshit. So uh, see you guys in the next video.